Shumrabyug. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Shaluk. Shalisten, the podcast that takes a pop at culture. Shaluk, Shalisten. Shaluk, Shalisten. Shaluk, Shalisten. Shaluk, Shalisten. Shaluk. Shalisten. Shaluk, Shalisten. Shaluk, Shalisten. Oh, very good, Benjamin. It's a fabulous time to be an Irishman, Suspos, because this week we had the BAFTAs and the People's Choice Awards. How many awards are going back to Cork, we'll find out. Not only that, though, there's other people, Suspos, many of them not Irish, in Fantastic Four. And we have the finally long-awaited trailer for X-Men 97, the continuation of the greatest animated series about the X-Men from the early 90s. And, Benjamin, we finally got a trailer for June 2. Trailer 2, June 2. June squared. Very good. Oh, oh. And I've seen Madame Webb. Oh, you poor, poor soul. If that didn't fill you, Michael, with bloodlust and a want to inflict harm on your fellow man, perhaps our final segment and main topic for the evening, Blood Sports, the most dangerous game. Which ones are they? Fiction is filled, Michael, with sports that definitely aren't legal right now, but might be in the not-so-distant future. Mm. Well, joke's on you, Benjamin, because I'm always full of the bloodlust and the hatred of my fellow man, just like the nominees for the BAFTAs. <laughs> I bloody got them then I took them down a notch Uh, That's a stretch That's a stretch Michael The BAFTAs took place Yesterday Michael At the time of recording It is the 19th Of February 2024 Uh, Recording It'll be two days uh, Previous When you're listening to this Ladies and gentlemen Or who knows When you've picked this up Perhaps you picked it up In the future In between Bloodsport games Exactly Benjamin For example If you're listening to it On Wednesday It will have been Three days too many days Too many days Too many Benjamin, days This is now my new favourite segment on this podcast Where each week we say something that's slightly timely And then waste five minutes telling people how long it will have been since we said it Depending on when they're listening Michael, people say that that's the way to keep people engaged Is to overcomplicate things And just provide a ton of context Yeah, yeah, yeah So for example, if you're listening yeah. to this on Friday it would have been nearly a full week <laughs> since the BAFTAs were on. For maybe, example, maybe this is why people think we're Brits. Maybe that's why we get mean <laughs> comments in the in the YouTube comments. We got maybe that's one mean get. comment, Benjamin. Benjamin, ever since our slight brush with social media virality, well, brush is probably the wrong word. Ever since we started teetering on the brink of social media virality, <laughs> we're getting thousands of comments. Literally thousands of comments Benjamin and one person called you British and you've been all up in arms about it for a week and a half or two and a half weeks if you're listening to this a week after it's published <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen the BAFTAs was happening it was an exciting time there yesterday lots of everybody's favourite categories a few surprise cameos from big big celebrities oh, cool. and yeah. a very sneaky cameo by a saucy minx who wasn't supposed to be there who was it? Was it Kanye West? Well, we can't really go into it just yet, Michael, but we'll stack it up. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen, to find out who it was. Actually, I don't think we'll probably say their name, Michael, because it will give them it'll give them what they want. And I don't know if we should be feeding people like that, but we'll get into it oh. on the podcast. Michael, there are a few surprising wins and a few not-so-surprising wins on the BAFTAs we'll yesterday. Well, rattle through them for us, Ben. Rattle through them at a rate of knots. Yeah. They were they were hosted uh, by none other than David Tennant. Him off Doctor Who. Him off Doctor Who. Him, now, Michael, some of these are Christ Middle Church. What was that called? Yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, Broadbent. I don't know. I can't. Uh, Broadchurch. <laughs> Broadchurch. That was it. Jim Broadbent is a beloved British actor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not not quite the same. But anyway, Michael, a couple of the big ones that are important to us. Emma Stone swept the board in the leading actress category. She won it uh, for Bella Baxter in Poor Things, the haven't seen it. strange Frankenstein inversion from Yorgos Lanthimos. Mm, haven't seen it, but I don't think it's out here still. Absolutely. Best leading actor, Michael, goes to Irishman's nuclear spouse, Killian Murphy. It's about time someone took a bloody BAFTA back to Cork. It's great to see Michael. a bit of homegrown local talent winning the BAFTAs. <laughs> he is the first Irish-born actor to ever win the category. Is he really? He is. He's the first to do it. That's a, it's a pretty big achievement. Oh, good man. 
Or it isn't if you don't buy into colonial fucking meritocracies. But, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. It, it, pretty great stuff for Killian. Killian did quite well there. Good for him. We had our best supporting gang. Best supporting actor, Michael. Very interesting. Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer. Yeah, he was in Oppenheimer, remember? He's probably going to win an Oscar yeah, for that. He was in Oppenheimer. Yeah, he probably will. Yeah, we'll give him an Oscar. We'll give him an Oscar. Um, and then, um, very, very interestingly, Michael, uh, Best Supporting Actress, Yes, Michael, uh, went to, sorry, Devine Joy Randolph for The Holdovers, which we haven't seen. Haven't seen it. Haven't seen it, Benjamin. Benjamin, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reiterate my stance on this. I don't think that actor and actress should be different categories because there are so many things in the world where men and women are different and should be measured by different standards, but acting is not one of them. Yeah, fair. I mean, it's all pretend, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> having an L willy or not having a willy doesn't make you any better at pretending. It certainly doesn't, Michael. It certainly does. Not in my experience, anyway. Uh, <laughs> exactly, Benjamin. And if you aren't living proof of that, I don't know who is. Ben, the funny thing is, though. What? What? <laughs> Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I broke Ben with that comment. Ben! What happened at the BAFTAs, though? What was the big thing that happened at the BAFTAs? So the big winner of the evening, of course, was Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer, Michael. It swept the board in many, many categories and just kind of came out the overall winner of the evening, including Best Picture, Michael. But as... Yes? A retinue of the film's uh, main stars and producers and the likes got up on the stage, including Christopher Nolan himself, young Killian Murphy, and the producer and partner of... Uh, Christopher Nolan whose name escapes me because I am a big old sodgy boy Um, Mm. I got on stage Michael a a mysterious other person appeared on the stage with them Um, oh some sort of alien visitor and stood there quietly while the acceptance speech was being given Um, and as it turns out Michael this is a YouTube star whose entire shtick is crashing big ceremonies oh cool yeah that's fun isn't it that's not alarming at all (laughs) that's gas that's yeah. brilliant. So Just some he, YouTuber he, was it a man or a woman? It was a man. Uh, I, look, we'll give the name Michael because it, it's not going to do all that. Much I know harm. who it was. It's that. It's that guy. It's the guy who gave the referee the red card, isn't it? Uh, no, it's 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 Liz Wani is the name of the the YouTuber Michael. Um, I don't think it's the guy who gave. He did also um, crash the Golden Football Awards though. The the ball door. I'm not sure, uh, but it's a big... Balloon door? Balloon door, maybe. Who knows? But he crashed it anyway, Michael. He just stood there quietly while the speech was going on. um, And everybody kind of went, who's who's this guy? Who's this? And I was sitting there with my good lady friend, Michael. And I was saying, quite literally, who is this guy? What's he doing up on stage? And my good lady friend was also like, what's going on? What's the deal? And it turns out today, Michael, we found out that it was a complete security breach. And this guy just slipped up on stage and... BAFTA has had to issue a massive apology to Christopher Nolan and the general group there because if it had been anybody else, Michael, quite dodgy. That's gas. That's absolutely hilarious. Ben, yes. one of the biggest things that happened at the BAFTA is the British Academy of Film and Television Awards. Yeah. Which I think is what it's actually called. I was going to try and do a joke there, but I accidentally said what it really is. But one of you the big things right. was that nobody gave a flying shit about Barbie. Nobody, Michael. Not one of them. Not a single vote was cast in Barbie's direction. Proof, if ever you needed it, that the BAFTAs do not care for American cultural imperialism. Uh, They they don't. They will stick strictly to British cultural imperialism where possible, Michael. Yeah, 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 exactly. (laughs) But Benjamin, not to worry if you're a fan of shite American stuff, because they had their own backpatting session at the weekend. It's called the People's Choice Award, Michael. And notably, none of the big American actors that went to the BAFTAs went to it. (laughs) No, no, because they were on at the same time, Benjamin. It was hosted by your arch nemesis, Simu Liu. Now, the reason that you don't like Simu Liu is lost to history, Ben. Because he's a petty little shit, Michael. Who oh, shouldn't be? Who shouldn't take personal gripes with fans on the internet, Michael? It's that's fine. what it is. It's fine when you or I do it, because we don't actually have any great weight or cultural, I don't know, heft to us, Michael. We don't. We don't participate in the culture, and we certainly don't... You know, I I grow more and more thin skinned with each mean Anglo centric <laughs> comment that's left on our YouTube channel. He does, but he does. It's quite funny but that, but watching a man breaking down. For, 
that's fine for me and, and yourself, Michael. Because, you know, we're not famous. We don't mm. have to be nice. Simu Liu picks fights on teenagers who leave slightly mean comments on his social media posts. What the fuck? Yes gas and he would mention the people's choice awards were on and they might have well have they might as well call it pop culture silver medal yeah yeah you, you almost made it the yeah. award ceremony benjamin again look we won't get into too much men versus women on this but i don't think a man won an award in this that wasn't doesn't have the word man in the title right well you you lash through it there and, and right, let me know movie of the year benjamin now look these are publicly voted awards on the internet. Yes. So, four out of seven of the nominees are absolute fucking rubbish. Okay. So the nominees were Barbie, Fast yes. X, for movie yeah. of the year, Ben, bearing in mind, this is for movie <laughs> of the year. Barbie, yeah. Fast mm. X, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which is fine, well, but movie of the year, good. not by a the, long shot. No. No. The Little Flippin' Mermaid. Ah, get fucked. Oppenheimer what's Oppenheimer doing in there Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse the Super Mario Bros movie and Mm. Taylor Swift the Eras Tour that's not a movie it's not a movie that's a documentary that's a tour documentary so anyway Ben Barbie basically won every category they could be possibly nominated in and everything it didn't win The Hunger Games the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes one. So, basically, Benjamin, I think what we're, ta- what we're being told here is that People's Choice Award is voted for by teen girls. It must be. It must be, Michael. But it, look, I, oh, there's a very interesting argument to be made here, Michael. What is it? W- one way or the other. You know, what makes a movie successful? Is it mass appeal in the case of the People's Choice Awards or is it critical acclaim in the case of the BAFTAs? Because one of the, the movies that won across the board in the BAFTAs yesterday was Zone of Interest, which is um, a Holocaust movie about, uh, oh, about the man Auschwitz. who runs Auschwitz. Yeah. Yeah, and he, yeah, he, yeah, lives, yeah. he lives next door. And it's it, the Zone of Interest is his family and how they live with the absolute horror of the Holocaust happening over the garden wall, as it were. As it were. Um, and Michael, nobody's having a good time with that film, and if they are, they should probably get checked out. Well, you can have a good time, but not a pleasant time. Being intellectually yeah, well, maybe stimulated, bit- Benjamin, for some people, being intellectually stim- stimulated is a good time. Well, luckily, ladies and gentlemen, you'll never have to worry about that listening to this podcast. (laughs) Uh, But if you do enjoy listening to this podcast, ladies and gentlemen, there are a few different ways you could support your lack of intellectual stimulation. Click on wherever you're listening and give us a little review, ladies and gentlemen. Give us one. Yeah, throw us some stars. Write a mean review about us, ladies and gentlemen. We don't care. We don't care. I will read it. I will cry. If that prompts you to write the review, do it. If you could Do somehow it. imply that Benjamin is either British or a British subject, that would be ideal. Yeah, I'll take either. I'll take both of them. Will make me tear up. Very much so. Mmm, mmm, not great stuff. But yeah, look, I mean, look, it's interesting when we look at the BAFTAs versus the People's Choice Award. There is, a <laughs> oh, there's a clear distinction in craft happening, perhaps. TV show of the year was Grey's Anatomy, Ben. Yeah, I mean, look. I don't know if we can say that any TV show that's lasted 27 seasons has kept its original flair, <laughs> Michael. But mm. I, I mm. don't know. It beats it's, a bear. it's very tricky. It, like, that's not right. That's, that's not correct. I don't, I, I, I realise I've just made the point that there is no empirical right or wrong, but that's not right, Michael. That's, that's not correct. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly, Benjamin. Benjamin, guess who uh, Social Celebrity of the Year was? Social Celebrity? Yeah. Was it KSI? No, it was Taylor Swift, Ben. This is uh, the PSAs, Ben. This is the PSAs. This is, PSI is a British fellow, isn't he? Uh, KSI is a British fellow. KSI, he's, yeah. he's a British fellow. PSI is uh, pounds per square inch, Benjamin. Yeah. That's a measure of <laughs> That's pressure. very important. Um, yeah. But, like, I don't know. It's it's interesting. The the BAFTAs is an interesting time in itself, Michael. I don't know if we should laud... I don't know if Oppenheimer deserved to sweep the BAFTAs, Michael. I don't know if, if it did, but... Ah, look. But uh, Christopher Nolan's one of your lads, Ben. Oh, do you mean one of the Brits, Michael? Is that what you meant? 
Yeah, one of the Brits. Yeah, one Aww. of the subjects of the British Empire. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now listening to the last ever episode of Shall Look, Shall Listen, the podcast that takes a pop at culture, because I'm done. That's that's cheeky. But, <laughs> Michael, speaking of American-centric People's Chosen yeah. People uh, awards, yeah. we got it? some pretty big news on old Valentino's Day. Yeah, so Marvel decided, Jesus H. Christ, let me do my, I'll do my famous Kevin Feige impression, Ben. Good. Good. I can't remember how it goes. I'll just I'll just do me, but with a bad American accent. Nice. Jesus H. Christ, guys. This Madam Web. People are thinking that it's a Marvel movie. Including the stars Dakota Johnson and Sidney Sweeney, who both think they're in a Marvel movie. But, oh my God, we got to distract the people from thinking that this thing's a Marvel movie. What can we tell them? Uh, yeah, and what we got, Michael, in, in response to that was mm. probably the best bit of marketing I've seen from Marvel in a couple of years. Yeah, go on. Uh, they, they gave us a, a 1960s style kind of painted postcard. A season's greeting a kind of gig. Yeah, I'd argue that's a 90s style thing. Would you? I would, I would yeah. have argued the opposite, but maybe I'm... Maybe, maybe Michael... Maybe yeah. my old mind is being warped by the fact that the Fantastic Four themselves come from, from the, 60s. the 1960s. So that might be what's happening there. But Michael, we got a look at our cast. It's some very clever work from Marvel because it's it's all of the cast members, inclu- including Benjamin Grimm, the Thing, who normally we can't recognise, but there's a very handy portrait on the back wall, Michael. Very clever. Yeah. So, Michael, this gives me hope in a number of different reasons. Number one, Pedro Pascal's in it. If Pedro Pascal's in it, I'm there. I'm sold. I'm in. Very good. I disagree because I I still think that Marvel has a big issue with casting, what's his name? Reed Richards, too handsome and charming. He is very handsome and charming, Michael. He's also very likable, affable and human. That's the problem with old Pedro in this role, Michael. Exactly, Benjamin. And, And Reed Richards, like... This is the guy, Benjamin, who recklessly took his family into space. Everyone got horrific powers, including him turning into a big stretchy wibbly wobbly man and came mm-hmm. down and said, and I shall be called Mr. Fantastic. What a prick. What a prick. How dare you give yourself that moniker yourself? <laughs> exactly. And Ben Grimm <laughs> says, Ben, I'll be, I'm the horrible lumpy monster man. I'm some sort of thing. And then Reed Richards says, and that's what we'll call you, Ben, the thing. But I'll be Mr. Fantastic. What a prick. So, uh, speaking of the thing, Michael, this will be played by the the Bears' own Ebon Mosk Backrack. The first ever Jewish actor to play the thing in live action. Now, Ben, he's only been three, and one of them was a little English fella. Yeah, Benjamin Grimm is famously Jewish, Michael, in the comics, so that's that's quite important. Um, And a good bit of representation there. Again, great... Uh, casting there in my opinion Michael while I take your criticism of Pe- Pedro Pascal being too darn cute Michael he mm. is he's too darn cute he's too darn cute I think this is an inspired bit of casting because he plays cousin in the bear um, yeah, 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 yeah. and he does a great great job of being Richie in the bear Michael uh, Yvon Moss Backrack plays a very good grumpy with a heart of gold character um, and I think that's probably what we need to see from the thing. Yeah, yeah, and you he know? was in The Punisher. So he's already yeah. in the MCU. Um, we've got noted blonde bombshell Vanessa Kirby in the role. Yeah, I'm not sure on that one. Um, I, I'm i sold. She's, I, she's bright she and bubbly. Has she ever done American? And, uh, not to my mind. Like, oh. I only remember her from the Fast and Furious films and then Mission Impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was in the Fast. And, she wasn't in the Fast and Furious. She was in Hobbs and Shaw. A Fast she was and in Hobbs and Shaw. Story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And Mission Impossible. And she was also Geraldine in that fucking awful Napoleon movie from recently. Was she? Was that what she was in? <laughs> yeah, she was in that too. But I don't know. Is she? She always tends to play a sharp-featured, angular-faced seductress. And Sue mm. Storm always struck. I don't think they've ever quite got Sue Storm right. I think Sue Storm is one of the hardest characters to cast because... Yeah, I think that's fair. You're teetering on the line between all-American, maternal, and also inexplicably hot. 
in- inexplicably hot. Yeah. Yeah. She's got that damp fella coming up out of the ocean and going, I'll throw away my kingdom for one night with you, Sue Storm. Uh, yeah. I, I, I mean, Vanessa Kirby kind of gives that. Yeah, yeah, I can see it, but she's also English. I get is it. She go- is she going to be English or is she going to do an American yeah. accent? Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Why no. not make her... Can you make her English? Is that allowed? Are we allowed to do that? I, I suppose you could. The last one was English. Is Kate Mara English? Uh, yeah, but she like, she's also the first blonde, technically, Michael, to play her. The first um, actual blonde. I don't know if Vanessa yeah. Kirby is actually blonde, Benjamin. Let's not get too deep down that rabbit hole. All right, well, let's... All right, yeah, we can't really... We, we, kinda, we can't really... Um, go for that but yeah like it's an interesting choice but Michael the most controversial choice is the one that I never thought um, would be the controversial one Joseph Quinn another Englishman Michael um, is playing Johnny Storm maybe they are going to be English then maybe both of them are English oh yeah okay I'd be alright with that Joseph Quinn is English Michael yeah um, maybe, so they, maybe, maybe they're doing that maybe they will be Susan and Johnny a damp Sunday afternoon yeah, I mean, in some ways, Michael, it hasn't gone down very well. Um, this oh, really? is a, a very interesting backlash to Joseph Quinn being cast as Johnny Storm. A lot of people are not happy. They don't feel he's attractive enough to play Johnny Storm. Now, this is a classic, Michael. Oh, he's not hot enough to do the job. But this is surprising because when he played Eddie Munson on Stranger Things Season 5, people went feral for Joseph Quinn. Absolutely feral feral for Joseph Quinn Benjamin. people were like sliding up into his DMs and everything yeah major celebrities were thirsting for him publicly Michael yeah 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 and God bless but, him Benjamin he's he might not be directly one of our lads but he's close enough ah he's got Quinn in the name Michael we'll claim him we'll claim him come that's on. what we're doing now come on, ben. 2024 name, is the year of claiming them his name is Joe Quinn they're all getting claimed we all Joe Quinn we've come all on. worked with a Joe Quinn but uh, yeah, a lot of people have been saying, like there's been a lot of tweets, one of the big ones that came out was saying goodbye to pretty men playing Johnny Storm, which I thought was very harsh, um, because he's still quite pretty. He's, he's still quite a handsome he's man. Handsome fella, Benjamin. Um, but yeah, people have not been happy about it, and there's been a massive backlash, which has also prompted a little bit of discourse around, is Marvel trying to cast what they perceive to be the hot topic and failing horribly because they don't realise that trends like that are flashes in the pan, Michael? Um, and a representation of one very specific character being hot. Anyone can that be, makes sense. Anyone can be good at anything, Ben, just as, as anyone can be terrible at anything. Give him a shot. Yeah, well, that's life, isn't it? Give him a shot, Benjamin. That's Remember life. the bloody backlash when Michael B. Jordan was cast as Johnny Storm and people were like, oh, they're doing stuff here and I don't know if I agree with it because I'm secretly a racist. And then everyone was like... I'm secretly a racist. But at least he's hot, and he's supposed to be hot. But then, Benjamin, here's a quick question mm. for the people who are worried that Joseph Quinn isn't as hot as Michael B. Jordan. What was your favourite uh, Johnny Storm moment from the Fantastic Four movie? I've never seen it. Yeah, yeah, no one has. That's, no one that's has. kind of my point. No one has. Yeah, I mean, what I'm saying is hotness. And Michael B. Jordan is great, because remember him in um, Bloody Black Panther? He was the best thing in it. He was. He was the best thing in it, Michael. That's true. Best thing in it. That's true. But um, he wasn't the best thing in Fantastic Four because it was rubbish. Yeah, I mean, this this could be very interesting, Michael. They're going to have to do some seriously hard work to make this a solid movie. Um, and not well, would... the third in a, in a Fantastic Four flop trilogy of reboots. You know. Mm. It, Delicious. Uh, because it's it's failed so often the, I did the marketing gave me a little bit of hope I like the tweet tone I think there's probably room for some comedic work there I think it might be hyper reality a little bit like WandaVision there could be hints of that in there I don't know what way we're going to get this Michael I don't know if this is going to be set before the Marvel Universe and we're going to get an actual 60s group I don't know if they're going to fly through space and be a weird 60s family in modern America I don't know what they're going to do I don't know I don't know if there's room in the Marvel Cinematic Universe history now to go back and enter a new decade of oh there were also super people then that we haven't just talked about until now yeah we just we, it went unless Michael and this is a, this is a small pitch that Kevin Feige can consider 
Yes, go on. Unless the experiment is treated as something so horrifically vile that nobody spoke about it. It was just locked away in a in a, a kind of government thing. Yeah, that, you know, they never that, became the people's heroes. That's kind of the story of Fantastic. Fantastic, is it? it? Oh, it is. Yeah, You're right. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's it what is. Happens in I mean, we, we can't say how much of a static image is going to influence the tone of a film, Michael. And we've only gotten no. the one hint of it so far. But I like the casting. Um, mm. I feel that of the people that are there, Michael, Joseph Quinn is doing the best out of this casting because he's he's being elevated somewhat to Marvel's house. I feel like this is a step down for Pedro Pascal. I don't know if he's going to be f- filing, you know, a similar concern to Iowa Debre and Stephen Yeun and going. Mm, mm. Maybe I'll maybe I'll just. I'd say I'd say Benjamin, they've locked him into a heck of a contract before they release this news. They must have. They must have. I mean, Vanessa Kirby, fair enough. A relatively celebrated person, but it's a good get for her. It's a good get for Joseph Quinn. It's a great get uh, for Ebon, who is only TV famous so far and probably needs some projects to elevate him to A-list status, if you want. But it's very interesting. We'll see how it goes. I don't have a lot of faith, unfortunately, because Marvel's just burned me one too many times, Michael. Benjamin. Yeah. Vanessa Kirby's middle name is Nula, so I think that gives us enough of a reason to claim her for one of us as well. Ah, double claimed. Cross the board, lads. But Benjamin, look, all of that is irrelevant, because this week we got the greatest thing of all time. We finally, after years of teasing from those old teases over at Marvel and what used to be known as Fox, the desiccated and reanimated corpse of Fox, they gave us the first trailer for X-Men 97. Benjamin, the X-Men from the early 90s, they're back. Yeah, so X Men ninety seven is <laughs> something that <laughs> most <laughs> that's that's um that's Joan as policewoman. Joan policewoman. I don't think it was Helen. What was her name? I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're curious about what that is, just look up a uh, Hungarian cop show theme tune ripoff for X Men, yeah. and uh, it'll it'll pop up because apparently the, Linda. the earworm of it, Linda policewoman. The earworm, ladies and gentlemen, theme tune of X Men '97, which is is apparently note for note lifted from hit Hungarian TV show Linda Policewoman. Linda Policewoman. Um, Linda Policewoman, which is Michael. You know, sp- talk about shows that had cultural impact. Talk about you know shows that swept the BAPTA categories back in yeah, the day. Yeah. yeah. The Linda is Policewoman. You know. Wow. Great stuff. Wow. Benjamin, stop talking but- <laughs> about Linda Policewoman. We're talking about the X-Men. They're back. And it's it's like it's 1997 all over again. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know if that's a good thing, Michael. It, 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 many of our listeners, Michael, yes. especially the Irish ones, will be familiar with the 1997 X-Men series because... Why especially the got- Irish ones? Because a lot of our listeners across the board, both young and old, will have seen this on the Den reruns or Fox animation reruns back in the day. Aye. This cartoon ran much longer in Ireland than it did in the States. Ah, yeah. Benjamin, this is one of the most popular cartoons of all time. This is a massive pop culture footprint. This cartoon is one of the reasons that the Avengers movie made $2 billion at the box office. Because this cartoon, yes, absolutely. This cartoon primed a generation of superhero fans who weren't necessarily comic book fans. Okay. So this. All right, I take that. This put into the mind of impressionable youths in the early nineties that superhero team ups are flipping awesome. And you should be excited about superhero team-ups. And there might be a little hairy fella. And there might be a big hairy fella. And there might be a lady who can do weather stuff and whatnot. There might be a boring guy with eye lasers. And they're all going to team up and they're going to fight all sorts of weirdos. And then, Benjamin, that entire generation was chasing the dragon for years of shit early 2000s superhero disappointments. And then they hit peak spending ability just in time for the Avengers <laughs> to swoop in and scoop up two and a half billion dollars at the box office. Because they really of did. this cartoon. Oh, the glory days. 
because of this cartoon. What a treatise, Michael. What a hypothesis. What a thesis statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but come here to me. What? Fuck me This I, I I am not One of the target demographic For this cartoon Michael I am I am Outside of this Because all I saw was Oh they've kept Everything exactly the same They haven't um, kept Everything exactly the same Benjamin There's quite a controversy Rogue's butt is smaller Ah oh, now Yeah Ah oh, now Oh yeah Ah, now, talk about whitewashing history, Michael. Oh, Jesus. It's, it's unacceptable. It's entirely unacceptable, Benjamin. A whole generation of perverts were raised finding Rogue attractive. And now they've made her... There are many, many art... <laughs> marginally less attractive. On, sorry. <laughs> there are many, many artists that still make their living off Ill- <laughs> illicit requests yeah, yeah. to illustrate Rogue and from that specific series, yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael. Yeah, yeah. From I that mean, specific series. Absolutely iconic, Benjamin. The looks from that co- that series are iconic. They've made a couple of changes. Bishop's had a haircut. Storm's had a haircut. Yes, he has. Yes, she has. Um, Rogue's, I don't know, stopped squatting. No good. <laughs> No good. Back to the gym with you, Rogue. Back to the bloody gym. How's she going to squat, Ben? There's not a gym in the world that's going to have like enough weight to to work or give her a glute workout. She'd need some kind of. She'd probably need some kind of bloody gravity based thing like they have in Invincible. Yeah, yeah. Or for Superman when he's uh, pushing suns and whatnot. Yeah, suns. He's just got two suns on a bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pushing them up and down, um, but yeah, I, look, I don't think I'm the target demographic here, Michael, because it looks a bit shit to me. But I don't have the nostalgia fuel to hook to my veins that maybe other audience members do here. Well, Benjamin, if you call it shit one more time, we're going to find out if you have nostalgia fuel because I'm going to set you on fire. <laughs> Exactly, ladies and gentlemen. I feel like many of the listeners to this week's episode are probably going to turn on me. In the Discord, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to turn on Ben in uh, the Discord, you can find the link to that Discord down below. We have a fun little animated pitchfork gif and a fun little animated fire gif just for such events. I know you're going to have to make sure that that's true, Ben. And, ladies and gentlemen, the funny thing about it is Ben actually finds people turning on him in person less upsetting than complete strangers on the internet. So he probably would prefer that. Completely fine with it. (laughs) Completely fine with it. Come at me. Come at me. Come at me. Benjamin. It's it's my Go on. Yes, go on. What did you think about the voice acting, Ben? They're they're either some of the original actors or they're getting impersonators. It's shit. Oh, oh, you're gonna get pitchforked. (laughs) You're gonna get absolutely pitchforked. Michael, we've advanced enough that we can polish things up even if we're bringing them back. Look, is that... By the way, they do a little... In the in the trailer, they do a little throwback to the original finale. Is that how X-Men 97 ended? I think so. I don't really remember. I don't remember. I never saw it. I don't really remember. Like um, most children's cartoons in the 90s, it petered out in quality as it came towards its conclusion. So... Yeah, yeah. The peak of it is really the first couple so, of seasons. But Michael, the other thing here is this has only just been revived. This this has this was shelved. Um the the really startling thing about this is this has been dusted off days ago. Um we got an announcement that they were actually going ahead with it, and then we got the trailer. So Kevin Feige is obviously sitting there going, We are fucked um we need to throw everything we have in terms of nostalgia in terms of the big gets at the wall as quick as we can and we need to scramble to recover this franchise because right now it's not going very well speaking of though ben june 2 looks like it's gonna go gangbusters gang busters gang they're gonna they're gonna have a time they're gonna ah uh, what, what's that you want a quizzed shatterack what Get him, get up, Fucking get him get up in you. you. Get your mua dib. Get him up in you. Yeah, get your bloody spice, spice get, melange, get spice baby. Melange in you, ben. Benjamin, the big highlight of what, funnily enough, what seems to have drawn more eyes to June Volume Two or whatever the heck it's called was not the trailer for June Volume Two, which was fine, but it it was a combination fine. of two social media meme things. The first one was Zendaya dressing up as a robot for the premiere. 
what the fuck was that Zendaya she was then doing? my favourite social media comment on it was because you know she was a robot Benjamin and she had the see through panels on her little robot suit my favourite so, my favourite social you. media comment was someone calling her see through PO ah, gas yes brilliant and then the other thing that <laughs> seems to be doing the rounds is that AMC Theatres released a popcorn bucket with a sandworm's mouth as the opening that you put your hand into. And I don't know if you've ever seen a sandworm's mouth, Benjamin, but it looks a little bit like an anus. Now, Michael, there's a few different things that have happened here, but my my TikTok feed has been inundated with sketches of people being like, a lot of people buying popcorn at the stand and not watching the movie. Um, it's it's very funny, Michael. Rebecca Ferguson, who plays, um, who plays Timothy Chalamet's uh, Benny Gesserit mother, Mm. in in the franchise had this explained to her in interview um mm. and it's very funny watching them realize exactly what it's about um it it invokes michael uh, the the pleasurable apparatus that made its uh, that made its name off a, of a little bit of alliteration using uh, a woman's reproductive sections um and something you can put in your pocket michael i do mean a flashlight pen i meant a pocket pussy but a flashlight will work just as well <laughs> Jeez. I've actually <laughs> never heard that term before. <laughs> That's I tried very to avoid upsetting. it, ladies and gentlemen. No, I tried to I'm, avoid it. No, I'm happier that you did say it. That is, it's very rare that you upset <laughs> me, and that was worth it. Anyway, Benjamin, the trailer looks uh, fine, doesn't it? it there's lots of new characters cr- and stuff. Christopher Walken's in it. Michael, again, if you've read the books, you know, there's, there's not a lot to get involved in here. But I suppose oh, this is this generation's Ben Hur, Michael. It's, it's a big cinematic effort. You know, it's it's a big spectacle that you're really only going to get the full whack out of in in the cinema. Like it's it's meant for cinematic watching. It's got a big scope. It's got massive visual effects. It's directed by everybody's darling sci-fi director Denis Villeneuve. Denis Villeneuve. You know, and I mean, we we just have to. Michael's leaving, ladies and gentlemen. So I can now say whatever I want. I'm just trying to do it subtly, Ben. Um, if everybody wants to bully Michael on the Discord, um, what you can do is you can hop on and just say that X Men ninety seven is shite. It's not um, shite, oh, Benjamin. It, and that's why Mick is great, ladies and gentlemen. He's definitely Very not good. just come back Benjamin, from his. Ironically enough, I hadn't ages. plugged in my laptop, which could have led to <laughs> an absolute Ben Colopy level disaster. That's very, 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 very close. Michael, speaking of cinematic spectacles that have to be seen to be believed, you've yes. gone to the cinema this week. No, I don't think I did. Did I? I think you were forced to, Michael. I believe I believe that the directors of Madame Webb are up in The Hague next week for Crimes Against Humanity. <laughs> Benjamin, I went to see Madame Webb. And Benjamin, again, to, to quote social media here, before going to see Madame Webb, I read a little thing on the internet that said there's a line in the movie that says you are the madame of the web. You are madame web. And what? I thought to myself is that going to be in it? And I was on tenter hooks throughout the entire movie waiting for someone to say that line. And that will tell you everything you need to know about the quality of the writing of this film. Michael, now I haven't seen Madame Web this week. What I have seen and yes. it's my new favourite thing, is Dakota Johnson doing a press tour for a movie she does not want to be in and still cannot believe she is in. It's the most entertaining thing outside of Rebecca Ferguson having a sex toy explained to her that you'll see on the internet this week. Dakota Johnson gives no fucks and is pretty much telling interviewers, don't ask me about the movie, don't do it. <laughs> Now, don't ask me about this stupid fucking film. In her defence, Benjamin, that appears to be Dakota Johnson's thing. Yes. All right. That's fair. That's like, very fair. She she just she just seems to genuinely not give a shit about anything. One of the massive advantages of being a very wealthy nepo baby, I imagine. Yes, she is the famous daughter of. Is it Kurt Russell and no Goldie? Not Goldie. No Don Hunt. Johnson. Don, Don Johnson, Johnson and Melanie and... Griffith. Many, Melanie Griffith, yeah. So, but what's very entertaining, Michael, is, and some of the news we're discovering now as a result of this, is she dropped her team, her Agency. kind of booking team, her agents, immediately after having to participate in this film because they misled her. 
um, into understanding what her role would be in the universe. Now, there's a little bit, there's a little bit, Michael, of buyer beware syndrome there in that you should read your contract and have a better scope of what well, you're doing before you get into it. Hold on a second. Bit. But I suppose... Hold on a second. I'm going to go cut on. across you there. There's a little bit of... You, you've taken a couple of leaps of logic there that aren't necessarily true. Here are the facts. Okay, go on. Here are the facts. The trailer for this film was released and within a few days she changed agencies. Now, everything beyond that is speculation either on your behalf or on behalf of the people who are writing about this. And it's a very funny narrative to say Dakota Johnson hates this movie and never wanted to be in it. But we don't know if that's true because her whole thing seems to be taking the piss out of being a movie star and she does do that quite often michael yes however yes secondary to that yes sydney sweeney did much the same thing yeah she changed agencies did she she did yeah she dropped her team after the trailer in a similar fashion she has also gone on to say mm. that dakota johnson was a complete diva who didn't talk to her three female co-stars during the filming of this film yep. And seemed to be quite irritated all the time. But I don't know if Sydney Sweeney is now leaning into the Dakota Johnson myth. The, the taking the piss myth. Look, anyway, Ben, who cares about the bloody social media storm around it? Because it, it hasn't it hasn't done it any good. Because it's brought in something like <laughs> six million dollars at the box office. This has made Morbius look like a smash hit. This has made the Marvels look like the film of the year. <laughs> Not in terms of quality, just in terms of nobody's going to see this. Yeah, I mean, look, it's not good, Milo. Why don't you give me your review? All right, here's the review. It's not horrible. It's not good. It's really, genuinely, truly not good. And every criticism you can possibly hear about it, that you're going to hear about it, is probably true. But okay, it's not offensive. I, I, I wasn't angry leaving the cinema. I was just bemused that this got made but I wasn't upset I've been to films and I've come out of them genuinely upset that someone has made something so irredeemably awful and anti fun and this is just not good it's not memorably not good it's not full of crazy batshit decisions it's just boring and slow and badly acted and badly written and with weak CGI and with a mm-hmm. go-nowhere plot and an incredible one-note, badly acted and incredibly poorly dubbed villain and tenuous connect. Is he dubbed? He, he's, he's overdubbed by himself for some reason. There was obviously something wrong with the oh. performance in the movie. And they've redubbed over it, and it sounds weird and out of place. Um, One of the things that has often gotten Spider-Man films in trouble for Fox is that they tend to overdo the mask, and the actors end up muffled. So it's probably that. Well, I'm not sure because I don't think he ever speaks with the mask on. He takes the mask off anytime he needs to oh, speak. Okay. Um, and also, he's not in costume for very long. It tends to be just flashes, like. Oh god. Yeah. Um I mean the characters, the four leads, essentially don't become superheroes in this movie. Um the three girls, the three teenage girls, who are all played by actors in their mid twenties, obviously, but the three t- teenage girls are mm. they never get their powers in this. So they what? don't get their powers. I, I I expect we're supposed to be excited that they might get their powers in the sequel. Or maybe we'll join them. Oh. We'll join them in, in media res in the sequel, and they'll have their powers. But every single glimpse of the three hot young actresses, Ben, that you've seen in Spider People costumes in the trailer, that's what's in the movie. That's it. No more, no less. Oh no! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Dreadful stuff. Oh, shame, shame on them. Shame on them. The, the the particularly egregious one is Sydney Sweeney, because. Look, Ben, Sydney Sweeney appears to be the hot new thing. And she is, she's white she, girl. Everybody of the loves Sydney Sweeney, apparently. She's this generation's Megan Fox. And say what you will about Michael Bay style casting and having a character turn from glamour, glamorous into super sexy. But they've taken Sydney Sweeney, who's famous for her attractiveness, 
and they've made her mm-hmm. a dowdy nerd. And she stays a dowdy nerd. From start to finish, the entire film, they've cast Sydney Sweeney as a dowdy nerd. It's very interesting, I, isn't it? I, there is... Go on. There, there is a... Okay, now, a pinch of salt for this, Michael, because it has about as much founding as my Dakota Johnson hates this movie theory. I think Dakota Johnson probably does hate this movie. But I'm yeah, just probably. I wasn't arguing with you about that point. I was arguing with you about the couple of leaps of logic that you have to go on the changing agent thing. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, well, if my name isn't Ben the Knee Colopy living on the edge <laughs> leap of logic, <laughs> then I don't know what is right in this world, Michael. You know, up and down and down is up if it isn't if it isn't my I name. Mean, but come here to me. Are. Come here to me. I think you've there's a lot of them. there's a lot of I have not muted myself. Get out of here. Can you hear me? Can't hear you. That's weird. Ladies and gentlemen, Mick oh. can't hear me now. Yeah, back now. Oh, that's very strange. Must have been an internet issue. Everything is recording fine. There's All been right. no blip. All right. Um, but, ladies and gentlemen, there, are, there is there is a a feminist theory. Oh, <laughs> circulating oh, very good. around very the exciting. internet. I'd love to hear your feminist theory, Ben. It was, it's not my feminist theory, Michael. It's a theory during the rounds. Are you aware of what the glass cliff theory is, Michael? Nope. Okay. The glass cliff theory uh, refers to the phenomenon in business of when women CEOs are appointed during crisis times for companies. Okay, go on. So that when when the company inevitably fails, mm. the woman CEO will then be removed and a male CEO won't receive any pressure. Oh, very good. That Does that make sense? Great. That sounds fabulous. How can we arrange for that so, to happen? It's it's a bit of a patriarchal notion that, you know, if you're under pressure to appoint more women to positions of power within your company or corporation, you might take advantage of a crisis or an upcoming economic downturn to place those women in power, get the brownie points for being feminist in business, and then as soon as it goes tits up, be like, well, that didn't work. We can never appoint women again. Interesting choice of saying tits up as a phrase there, Ben. Benjamin! <laughs> did say tits? You did indeed, yeah. Um, look, without wanting to get too much into arguing feminist theory, that's also a very convenient accusation slash conspiracy theory to use against female CEOs who fuck up. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, it's, uh, it's just a theory, Michael. There's, you know, we haven't done any quantifiable research into this but there's obviously some backing to it because it has a little bit written about it academically but a lot of people seem to be turning it into a buzzword to address what's gone wrong in this film because as you said Michael it's not memorably bad no it's not there are no batshit you know left turns where you're like what who greenlit this what is going it's all just a bit mediocre and rubbish no 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 it's not mediocre it's dreadful Okay, it's dreadful it, it, and rubbish. It, it is dreadful. Like this is this harkens back to Electra and Oh Steel and like this was like being it's set in two thousand three. Um apparently so they could use the, the song Toxic by Britney Spears because it's about spiders. Oh. And it's set in two thousand three and it also feels like it came out in two thousand three. It feels like a two thousand three superhero film. Maybe that's their excuse. In that um <laughs> in that it isn't. Sorry, but go on. But it, so th- this one's being thrown on it to say that you know Sony or Fox, which, which one is it? Sony, Sony, isn't it? It would, it would have to yeah. be Sony. Is yeah. basically ticking off there. We did it. We did the female-led superhero thing. It failed horribly. We can't do it again. Uh, end of it. However, I do think that somewhat overlooks the fact that the only interest that any movie st- movie studio has is making money. Um. Mm. But there is a theory circulating that it is essentially a glass cliff project for Sony. So they don't get put under any more pressure to be like, from sh- shareholders, whatever, to be like, make more female-led things. Because they're like, well, it didn't work last time, even though it's rubbish from start to finish, not because it's led by women. Are you saying that, Ben, things that are female-led and female-directed and female-written and female-produced can be popular if they're good? I would imagine so. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, all right. That's a fascinating take to take. Is it? No. No, no. It's, no, I, okay. It's cool. obvious, I would say. I was, Remember Barbie? I was very, was very confused there for a second. Oh, yeah, yeah, Jesus yeah. Christ. Anyway, 
But this is rubbish, Ben. So her mother dies in the Amazon <laughs> from a gunshot in the 70s. And Classic. she gets saved by a tribe of Spider-Men who Fuck live in the, in the Peruvian Amazon. Oh, I don't they like that. Have a, yeah, they have a spider bite her. That's a little bit racist. But anyway, not what you said. The fact the the Peruvian Spider-Men. <laughs> Los, Peruvian Los Arañas, spider. as they're called. It's it's not me who's racist. It's the Peruvian no, spider people Peruvian who are wrong. Spider. So anyway, they try to save her with a spider bite, but it doesn't work. But some of the spider powers get transferred across to Cassandra Webb, who's played by the Oh, uh, In utero. In utero, or just like as she's slipping out of utero, to be honest. Okay, it's very during good. Mid utero. <laughs> Mid utero, as they say. And uh, what she, because she only gets a little dose of it, she essentially gets the spider sense. She's got Spider Man's spider sense, but to the max. Ah, bollocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the guy who shot her and stole the spider, he off screen gets powers or whatever, and he becomes evil Spider Man. You mean we don't even get to see that? And yeah. And he wants to kill three teenage girls who are going to get powers in the future and kill him. Ah, so classic. Imagine Dakota Johnson versus Final Destination, but instead of like accidents killing you and you seeing brief flashes of it in the future, it's Spider Man. It's evil Spider Man. It's just evil Spider Man. It's just evil Spider Man. Ezekiel Sims, as he's also known. Michael, the only hope for Fox or Sony or one of those companies now is, is Venom 3. We're just going to have to wait and see. It's, it's their I last beg hope. Your, I beg your pardon, Ben. We have the very exciting Craven the Hunter to come this year. Oh, yeah, shit. Craven the Hunter is still a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got loads of stuff to look forward to. Anyway, look, it's it barely bears talking about Dakota Johnson might as well. Dakota Johnson is... It's hard to say she's trying her best. She doesn't seem to be trying her best, but she... Like... She, she's kind of funny a, a little bit. And, I mean, I don't know. It's She can't express any sense of urgency or concern or, um, like, she's she's driving a car to try and save them from evil Spider-Man and she looks like me going for a Sunday drive. She, she never can... Very calm and collected, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very, very calm, calm and collected because she doesn't appear to care. It's gas. It's, it's really quite funny watching Dakota Johnson's performance in it. That's probably the highlight of it. And she gets to be sarcastic a couple of times and you're like, that's probably the movie you want her in. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, you know, who knows? She might be in... She might get to star in the Spider-Man parody film in a couple of years. Um, mm. When we go back to Not Another Teen Movie or... Yeah, yeah. Anyway, what what were they scary movies? Scary yeah, movie we'll probably movies. get another wave yeah. of those at some point. Yeah. But but Michael, what? Michael, what? Do you know where you would need a calm nonchalance that didn't really make you sweat? In Los Angeles of 2018. Yeah, if you were taking on some kind of death sport. <laughs> Benjamin, we were inspired by America's Superior Bowling Tournament last weekend to think yeah. about what are the sports and games out there where people do die for real. Yeah, the old concussion bowl gave us a, a bit of an inspiration, <laughs> Michael. Um, <clears throat> we looked at, you know, I mean, technically, Michael, all high contact sports are death sports. They really are. You know, if it doesn't get, it won't get you in game, but it'll get you in the long grass. The concussions, Michael, that are coming out of American football and rugby, not great stuff. Very sad. Yeah, you don't want a concussion. It's very bad for your brain and your thinking. Don't play sports, ladies and gentlemen. There are absolutely no benefits. None. Not a one. Not a one. Did you have your soy latte this morning, Ben? It's for my it's for my dad, so he stops pushing me into sports. I just, <laughs> just, listen, Dad. Benjamin. No you're, good. You're a man in your mid thirties. Your father can't make you play soccer if you don't want to. You haven't met my father. He's terrifying. Um, you have met my father, actually. He's yeah, a lovely yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I take that back. Lovely, I see him I walking the dog back. all the time. You walk the dog all the time. He loves walking the dog. Jerry yeah. loves a bit of walking the dog. No concussions in walking the dog. No. Unless Bowie gets very excited. Mm. Um, <laughs> but anyway, come here to me. What? Come here to me. Come here to me. Michael, we said we'd take a look at the famous dystopian sci-fi trope of, oh, Jesus, that sport's very dangerous. If only I didn't have to compete in it for something to save some lives. Mm. Well, fuck you. You've got no choice. Get in the arena. <laughs> Get in the arena. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the one that might stick out to people the most or the one that people might be most familiar with this is a death sport as entertainment or as an opiate of the masses in the future. And there's no finer example of it, Michael. Hmm. 
The Hunger Games. The 1982, uh, well, okay, in modern era, The Hunger Games. Mm. The Hunger Games. But there's no finer example of it, Michael. Yeah. The 1982s, or 1987s, depending on if you prefer to read or watch films, The Running Man. Oh, with Arnold Schwarzenegger. With Arnold Schwarzenegger. So The Running Man is a Stephen King novel, which I had no idea, Michael. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was back when he was pretending his name was Richard Bachman. Yes, and he was horsing cocaine up his nose daily. <laughs> um, he was. He actually said that. Yeah, yeah, he was. He, he, he's, he's, he's fully admitted that. There's no slander in that, ladies and gentlemen. He was hoovering up cocaine at a rate that made Colombians sweat. Um, it was an impressive time to be Stephen King. Come here to me. What? It's 2025, Michael. Oh, yeah. Even better, Ben, in the in the movie, it's 2017, which is gas. It's 2017, which is gas. In the novel, Michael, it's 2025. Obviously, the, the movie people were like, that's too far. That's too... Let's make it 2017. Yeah. A reasonable amount of time. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, the world is a totalitarian dystopia with a crumbling economy, and America, naturally, is particularly affected by all this. Is this the book, or is this just real life? It's, it's <laughs> some insightful cutting edge commentary you, uh, you can hear that on our other podcast ladies and gentlemen it's called blood on the stock market floor and um, where we take a look at america's declining economic empire yeah yeah, yeah. benjamin anyway the country's in shambles yeah so yeah it's in a jock michael if the romans thought us anything is that when your country's in shambles get people to fight to the death for entertainment Get some fucking games on, get lads. The, get, get them get in. The, get bums on seats. Get bums on seats, Ben. Distract people from the humdrummery, the drudgery, the collapse of society by having them cheer for idiots on television. It worked for the Irish for hundreds of years, lads. We still love the ga and copper face jacks. <laughs> I've been watching Love is Blind for the last couple of days, Benjamin, and that is exactly oh, what this is. This is the downfall of society presented through reality TV. <laughs> Yeah, it's very unnerving. Um, so the running man in the book, at the very least, Michael, centres around Ben Richards, um, who basically finds himself in dire straits. His daughter needs uh, some medicine and his wife turns to prostitution for income. Fab, fab stuff. Fab stuff all around. And he's forced to take part in The Running Man, a deadly game show by the Games Network to earn money for his family. Um, and it naturally, Michael, you take on what are called the hunters in this game. And it's essentially... Britain's gladiator series but <laughs> if you actually died <laughs> which has just been relaunched Michael so maybe society is collapsing society is collapsing Benjamin but I tell you what the, the return of the hit show gladiators is not a symptom of that that will be one of the cures fab fab stuff Bradley Wigan giving it socks as multicoloured bodybuilders who are definitely not on any kind of performance enhancing substance make us go ooh very good Benjamin ooh look at that I body mm-hmm. Benjamin of course the thing about um, yes. the thing about the 1982 book is it was mildly popular but mildly, mildly popular but the the real kind of um, pop culture splash that it made was in the not massively successful 1987 film The Running Man I want to say by Paul Verhoeven, but it's definitely not Paul Michael Glazer. It's not Paul yeah, Verhoeven. Yeah. Uh, I'll take it's a look for Michael you now, Glazer, Michael. Ben. Take a look. I know, for you I know now. who it is. It's Paul Michael. Glazer. Paul Michael yeah, Glazer, yeah, Michael. It. Michael, Michael. It's it's Paul Michael Glazer. It's brought Michael? to you, Benjamin, by Paul Michael Glazer and Studio Interference. Yeah, ah, Michael, a tale as old as time. But, <laughs> like like everything rubbish from the eighties, somehow manages to come out of it. As quite entertaining. Surprisingly endearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, so I rewatched it for this, and it definitely is a much cooler concept than they actually managed to pull off. Oh, yeah. So, But there's only so, so much you can do with LED lights and plastic armor. Hey, you leave Dynamo alone. <laughs> he's one of the... He's one of the greatest. They're not called hunters in the movie. You, you've distracted stalkers. Um, St- <laughs> he's so one of the greatest great. stalkers who's ever lived, Benjamin. Dynamo. D- Dynamo is a horizontally challenged individual who hunts people in his car as opposed to, as yeah, yeah, opposed yeah. to anything else. And does opera singing. He's great. Oh, I forgot the opera singing. 
<laughs> Dynamo is fabulous. So, I mean, the real stars. So, Arnold Schwarzenegger's dong running around in a in a unitard is obviously one of the stars of this movie. But the rest, the real stars of this movie are the stalkers, the half bounty hunter, half gladiators, half hitmen who are in this uh, apocalyptic Los Angeles and are sent oh. to get them. And they all generally meet some sort of themed gruesome death, which is fabulous. It's spectacular. It's spectacular. So there's there's, um, there's Sub-Zero, Ben, and he's a big, huge uh, ice skating man. And he wants to he slam you into his ice skating goal, which then closes shut on you and chop you up with his razor-sharp ice skating Ice hockey stick? Is that what that sport's called? It's his, it's his, it's, yeah, it's his ice hockey stick, Michael. Yeah, yeah. And he's great. He's gas. And there's Buzzsaw, Ben. And guess what's special about him? He's got a buzzsaw, Michael. He's got a buzzsaw. And he'll chop you in half right from the crotch up to the head. As soon as look at you. Not a bother to him. In Not his a, sleep. Not a bother to him. And there's also my personal favourite, Jesse Ventura. Michael, Jesse Ventura is in this film as Captain Freedom. <laughs> and oh my goodness what yes. a thing did you ever hear about the prank that Arnold Schwarzenegger pulled on him yes but tell us anyway Arnold Schwarzenegger Michael is famous for fa- being a prick fucking f- fucking with his co-stars not in a fun way I don't think now he says that he quite often picked this up when he was in bodybuilding competitions and you had to psych the competition out mentally do you know what I mean? You had to... And I, I don't think that's true. Um, I, I think he's just a bit of a bollocks. And I think he enjoyed that back in the day. But this prank, Michael, involved measuring his guns, as yeah. it were. Yeah. Was this not from Predator? Um, is it Predator? I thought he oh, did that's this on the set. Never mind. Predator. It's got yeah, it's got nothing to do with it then. Never mind. Never it mind. Might, it might have been this, but I think they were already friends I don't. I, I genuinely don't know, Ben. I don't want to. I don't want you to not finish that story. Oh well, what happened was he decided to have a competition with Jesse. The the is it the Body Ventura? Is that his yeah, name? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's wrestling name. Jesse the Body Ventura. And uh, they measured biceps, and uh, Arnold pulled a bit of a sneaky boy. And on the first day they measured up, Arnold came in significantly lower. On the thing. I can't remember how he did it. Do you remember what he did to, to fool everyone? I thought he just cheated. I think he... Did he not just, get, like, th- bribe the guy who was just measuring? Cheats. Yeah, he did something. And they measured biceps anyway. And they made a big bet on who had bigger biceps. And when it came to it, after a pump or something, they got a pump on together. And they'd measure again. And it turns out that he had understated his original bicep girth. Or birth, if you will. Um... And then he came back and basically showed up Jesse Ventura by having a much larger bicep in the actual competition, which really, really fucked up Jesse Ventura, as any man who bases his entire identity on his physical ability might feel. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a sneaky fuck, that Arnold Schwarzenegger. Anyway, he manages to kill everybody. One one of the best things about... He pulls it off. One of the best things about uh, The Running Man as a blood sport is... Is... Because because of studio interference and because the film keeps getting mixed up and forgetting what it's doing, um, the whole rebel broadcast subplot with my favourite character in all of fiction, Mick. Um, That's Mick Fleetwood. It's Mick Michael. Fleetwood, yeah, it is indeed. From Fleetwood Mac. It's Fleetwood Mac. Fleetwood Mick is in it. Um, but for some reason, the rebel base and the broadcast tower that they need to get to are all within this arena where they're staging the game. Yeah, it's right there. It's right there in front of you the whole time. Makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. And that is the type of thing that if people... Not a lick. If if that happened in Madame Web, Ben, people would be upset now. But people are much more willing to forgive that sort of shoddy studio interference screenwriting if it's from 1987 as part of a cult classic. It was acceptable in the 80s, Michael. Acceptable in the 80s. Mm. Benjamin, but there's a whole Grant. kind of like... There's a whole kind of... socio-political subplot on this about... the the masses who are used being entertained and kept in a stupor with these televised killings starting to turn towards the side of the player. 
Yeah, I mean, look, it happens all the time, Michael. You, you spoke not so long ago about Death Race 2000 mm. on this podcast. Another great example of a blood sport yeah, pra- or a, a most dangerous game. Practically the same overall plot. The details of the dangerous yeah. sport are completely different. But it's still, man goes to prison for a thing he didn't have, shouldn't, that he didn't do. He's unfairly put in prison. Man unfairly put in prison. It's a semi-dystopian future. In prison, he's forced in some way to participate in some sort of deadly game. Um, yeah. Which is televised yeah. as an opiate for the masses. And then yes. through his heroism and his determination. And this is, this is also the plot of fucking Hunger Games, Ben. This yeah. is the plot of Hunger Games. It's all Games. the same. Um, in Hunger Games, it's a bit of a twist to that she literally, she puts herself in that position to save her sister. But the end effect yes. is the same. It's it's all roughly about there, isn't because it? Because basically the, the main twist of all of these kind of the deadliest games are humans fighting for our entertainment is eventually the public starts supporting the hero and turning on the corrupt government's yeah. institution. Be that... Stanley Tucci or the guy from this whose name I've forgotten the Tucci uh, Ben Richards Michael is, is is the name of Arnold Schwarzenegger's character in this but Michael do you know where that's never mentioned and there is a massive opiate in the masses and it's treated as fine because kids can play what? it fucking Quidditch Quidditch <laughs> Quidditch is fucking mental do you ever think about Quidditch as a blood sport it's too dangerous they shouldn't be letting those children play Quidditch Ben they're going to get con- repetitive concussive injuries Number one, Michael. It's fucking hundreds of feet up in the air on a flying stick. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Not safe at all. Number two. Two of the balls that frequently work within that game are called bludgers. After the action to bludgeon. (laughs) Right? And the job of two members of each team is to smash that ball at other people as hard as they fucking can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other children. Oh, they're children, Michael. And the hilarious thing about this is, oh, sometimes it cracks into your shin bone or gives you a concussion. <laughs> oh, Gas. what a good time. Now, what Benjamin, a good time. That doesn't seem any more or less dangerous than rugby. I've been in rugby schools and every, like in any rugby secondary school in Ireland, once every couple of weeks, suddenly half, the, all of the biggest boys from the year just disappear off into a van. And then they all come back a couple of hours later and three of them have broken arms. Yeah. And it's and never that's... explained. I'm only joking. It is explained. They play the game. <laughs> they play the game of rugby. Quidditch is just magic rugby. It's just magic rugby, but much worse because it's 120 feet in the air. <laughs> they could it's die. It's fucking mental. But also, and then, ben, Michael... They are wizards. They could just Wingardium Leviosa. The the worst part about the fucking Quidditch is, Michael, it's all for naught because all you have to do is catch the fucking snitch and all the scores and all the points that you were trying to put in in the first place don't really count because the snitch is heavily weighted in favour of whoever catches it. Yeah, but Benjamin, if catching the snitch was that easy, your lads up north wouldn't have lasted as long as they did. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Very good, Michael. Very good. <laughs> Look what you did there. That kind of socio-political commentary, ladies and gentlemen, is what you can enjoy here on Sure Look, Sure Listen. The podcast that takes a pop at culture. Are we done? Are we finished this week? Are we Are we wrapping it yeah. up? Let's wrap it up. Yeah, let's, let's, let's wrap it up, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, what are your favourite bloody sports that are absolutely mental and shouldn't be used as an opiate of the masses? Bonus points if you just name one of the sports that we already watch, like gladiator or soccer. Or boxing. <laughs> soccer. Um, the famously bloody sport, soccer. Of soccer. That's the only one, Michael, where players realistically act out what actual violence causes without experiencing the actual violence. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes um, and it's a lauded part of the game. Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a lot of part of the game. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoy blood sports like MMA and boxing, please don't give us a hard time. You could probably beat me up, but Mick will kick your ass. First of all, yes, I will. But second of all, well, calm it down there with the blood sports talk for MMA, call it be. <laughs> blood sports <laughs> oh, it's no different ladies and gentlemen give us your favourite in a few different places you can find us on the interwebs at www.shomrabeug.com s-e-o-m-r-a-b-e-a-g.com it means tiny room kind of in Irish 
Sort of a little bit, maybe. You can find us also on our ACAST website, www.shulukshulistenpodcast.acast.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go up on there. You're up on there. You can find us there. But if you want to follow us and see some of our content in a more digestible form, one minute at a time, you can check us out on Instagram at Podcast. Best place to bully Ben. Yep, you can join us on our fastest growing platform, which is TikTok at Podcast. I don't know if it's growing faster than YouTube, Ben. Uh, probably not growing faster than YouTube. You can check us out there as well, ladies and gentlemen, if you want. Um, but the best way to bully me, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the most effective and, you know, really in my face way to bully yeah. me so that I just can't avoid it yeah. is to hop up on the Discord linked below in the description. Hop up on it. I will also argue that that's not true, Ben, because we're going to be at Dublin Comic Con in three weeks. That's true. You can bully us there, ladies and gentlemen. Bully me to my face. We might even film it and stick it up on a platform. On the old internet for you. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it from us this week, but you can join us next week if you haven't had enough of that. We're going to be taking a look at the absolutely seminal 90s eco-terror classic, Twister. Are we watching Twister finally? We're watching Twister. We're doing an exhumed episode on Twister, and I will experience what it is to be sucked and blown about the place. Um, <laughs> bye, Bill Paxman. <laughs> right, or that's Pullman. it. I think it's Bill Goodbye. Pullman. Bill, no, it's Bill Paxman. I looked it up. <laughs>